In this tutorial video, we're going to go through the different settings that you can use to edit a model after you have created it in EasyCrate. So first of all, I'm going to open a model that I have already created in EasyCrate and to find previous prompts and models that you have created, you will need to select this option here and you'll see here that you have the option to view your image history. So I'm going to click on this and then this will show you the image history of any prompts you have used in the past. So you have a few different things you can do here in this list. So you can see here that some of them say relief generated. This means that there was a model created from this image. Any that don't say this will have just been an image that was generated and that the model still needs to be created. So if you click on the three dot option here, you can see here you have different options. So on any image that you have created a model from, you will have the option to re-download the model from here. You can also rename the image name. You can copy the prompt that was used to create that image and you can delete it as well. So for this tutorial video, I want to use this model of a dog that I have previously created. And just by clicking on the model, you can see here that it brings us back to the model settings. So now we're going to look at the different settings you can use to edit this model. So this option here allows you to change the angle that we are viewing the model. So I want to view it at a slight angle so I can click this part of the cube here and you can see now here that we are viewing the model at an angle. If I wanted to change this angle at all, I can click on the right mouse button and drag to edit angle we are viewing the model. So I'm going to go back to the angle we had originally and we're first going to look at the scale Z option here. Now moving the slide bar up and down here will increase the model height or decrease the model height. So if we move the slider up, you can see that it's increasing the model height. If we move it down, you can see that it will decrease the model height. And if we select this option here, it will reset it to the default setting. So for this model, I am going to increase the scale Z ever so slightly. And I'm quite happy with it there. And then the next option here is the detail enhancement. Again, you can move the slide bar up and down to edit this. If you move it up, you'll see that the detail in the model increases. If you move it down, this will decrease. And again, you have the option to reset it to the default detail setting as well. And again, for this, I do want to just increase this ever so slightly. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to leave it at that. So the next option is the replace below option. This can be helpful if you have any background that you want to remove from the model. Or if we can see on this example, we have quite a high vertical edge here. And I would like to remove a bit of that. So if we move the slider up for the replace below, you can see that it is removing the bottom of the model. So it is removing some of this vertical height that we do not need. And I'm quite happy with that again, so I'm going to leave it at that. And again, this option also has the reset option here. So the next option we're going to look at is the edit height curve option here. Now we can access this by selecting the arrow here, and you can see now we have the edit height curve option. This can be useful if you want to emphasize height in different parts of your model, as it allows you to edit the height of the model on a curve. The curve allows you to adjust the pixel heights of different parts of the model. So in its default linear state, there are only two points, which you can currently see this is what is set for this model. The one on the left is the lowest minimal height, and the one on the right represents the highest pixels in the model. We can edit the height curve of the model using this graph. So first I'm going to move the model so we're seeing it at an angle again and I'm going to add a point to the middle of the line here and you can see as we move this top point down it is only editing the pixel height 
at the top of the model. So in this example, the height of the nose of the dog is only being changed as this is the highest point in the model. If we select this middle option here and increase this instead, you can see that the bottom of the model, so all the pixels in the bottom half of the model are the only ones that are increasing and decreasing when we move this option. And that the top pixels on the nose are not changing their position. There are also some presets for this. So again, we've got a reset option here, which if we click this, it will reset it to the original linear line that we had originally. And then if you select this drop down list here, you can see that we have some preset options as well. So the linear one that we currently have, a gentle option. If we select the gentle option, you can see that it is reducing the pixels at the top of the model slightly. And then if we select the medium option, you can see that this is reduced even more. And then the last preset setting we have is the aggressive option here, which you can see that it that this will reduce the heights of the pixel on the top of the model even further. Now I'm just going to select the reset option to go back to the default setting. And I will add a point in the middle and I'm going to reduce the height of the nose slightly by dragging the right point down. And I do want to increase this middle point slightly just to bring the background details out a little bit more. And I'm quite happy with this. I would encourage you to have a go at these different options and to see how this affects the model and how you can use this to improve the models you are creating. So now we're going to have a look at the next settings on the list. So first I'm going to hide the edit curve height here by selecting the arrow again next to the name. And then the next two settings we're going to go through are the scale heights along Y axis and scale heights along X axis. Again, we'll need to select the arrow next to each of these settings to show them. These settings can be really useful if you are seeing a saddling effect in either the Y or X axis. So to go through these settings, so the first one being the along Y axis, we're going to click here to view the model from the left. So now we're viewing the left side of the model, we are viewing the model from the Y axis. Now if we are seeing a saddling effect to the model, this would mean that the center of our model here would be slightly higher or either side of this model may be higher than the rest of the model. And you can use the scale heights along Y axis to correct this. And as you can see here, there is a line which represents the height along the Y axis of the model. The left point here represents the left hand point of the model and the right point here represents the right hand side of the model. So if we click on the left point here and drag this up, we can see that the left side of the model's height increases. And if we bring it back down, we can see that the height of the left side of the model reduces. And then if we go to the right point here, again, you can see that if we increase this, the right side of the model increases. And if we drag it down, you can see that it reduces. And again, like the edit height curve, we can click on this line as well to add a point onto it to edit. So I'm now going to reset it to the default, which you can see here is just a flat line. So also we have some preset options for this as well. So if we click the drop down option here, you can see we have the taper top option, the taper bottom option, the emphasize middle option, and the reduce middle option as well. And these presets can be helpful if you are seeing a saddling effect in the model. But as our original model was quite level, I'm going to reset this so we're back to the original model. And again, if we now scroll down, you can see that we also have similar settings for along X axis. So for this, I want to view it from the front. So now we are viewing the model along the X axis. And again, the 
left point here represents the left side of the x-axis. So if we move this up, you can see that this increases and decreases if we move it down. So if we go back to the middle, and if you select the right point here and move this up, this will affect the right side of the x-axis and move it down to decrease it. And again, I'm just gonna click the reset option. And again, we have the same presets that we have for the y-axis here. So I can see here that the left side of this model is slightly higher than the right side. So if I select the taper left option, this does level it out more, but it levels it out a bit too much to the left. So now I can edit the preset slightly. So I'm just going to drag this up a bit and we view it from the front again. We can now just move this bit further up until we're happy with how level it is. I can now see that this is much leveler and I'm happy with that so I'm going to keep it as this. And once you are happy with the model you can use the download option here to download it. I would recommend having a go with all these different settings to get used to them and to see how they affect the model and how you can use them to improve the models you are creating. I hope you have found this tutorial helpful going through the different settings in EasyCreate.